Why? Visionary leadership. The leadership we have now is, uh, has recessive imagination genes. I feel sorry for them because it's been trained out of them. Their creativity has been trained out of them. And that's one of the things I bring to the table in this whole process, a lifetime commitment to creativity. Not only my own, I've been teaching creativity to many, many people. The biggest thing I've done in this country is I started a game 33 years ago, the Canadian High School Improv Games. We have hundreds of high oh, schools, each one with an improv team. An improv team? We graduate 1,000 kids a year for 30 years. You do the math. More than that. We have hundreds of schools, 1,000... Anyway, tens of thousands of them are living here. So what does this have to do with the mayoral campaign? Mm -hmm. Improve through improv. I propose that we have a creative response force made up of people who have been trained in these processes in order to look at situations, options, alternatives, and things that may project ourselves into the future to look at how things can be if we make this choice. So one of the planks in my uh, program is improve through improv. And I intend to have my improv nation come forward so that we can explore the issues of guns, of gangs, of drugs, of pollution, of poverty, of homelessness, that we use improvisation as a means to explore. And then we take the appropriate visionary action, which is what, uh, it's all I can offer. I'm not a politician. Not only have I never run for office, I almost never voted for anybody who did run for office because I was part of the Why Bother clan. But I'm calling out to the Why Bother clan right now and saying, here's why we bother. Here's a city that we can make together. Join me. We'll have a great time doing it. In fact, I make one promise. I have only one political promise. You get involved with my campaign, you will not be bored. <laughs> You know, that's, that's an interesting point that you make there, be, going from the Why Bother Gang to this improv, improved by improv strategy, because really what I think the, what that's really about is getting par people to participate in the political process. Because I think it's, it's, not, um, it's not unexpected that young people in particular are going to be uh, turned off by the political process because they know because they're not stupid and they haven't been, it hasn't been trained out of them yet, that voting once every four years or two years is meaningful democratic participation, right? So what you're doing by doing this Im Improved by Improv is really bringing a process where everybody can get involved. Absolutely. If you come to the campaign kickoff at OISE on the 28th at 7.30, you'll see demonstrations of what we call group creativity. One of the things, I, again, that I bring is a lifetime's commitment to learning. I still go to classes, I still learn, and I still teach. And one of the things I've been doing for over 40 years, my teacher of improvisation is still alive. His name, David Shepard. So I will be honoring my teachers. Dr. Jean Houston, who teaches cross-cultural anthropology, sacred psychology, mythology, things that begin with ology. She's very good with theologies. And what she's doing now for the United Nations is our leadership training programs, awakening indigenous wisdoms to examine the situations of the day, which is I, what I will do here in Toronto. We have 200 nations here. So the first part of my platform, a breath of fresh air, that drives everything green. And I've been the green guy forever. If you want to know my green credentials, I got them. I was the guy that wrote the Green Party anthem 20 years ago. If you love this planet, vote for it green, think green. If you love the planet, help restore it green, think green, think green. So I wrote the Green Anthem 20 years ago. My green credentials are solid. So I moved from green now to what I call the Wisdom Buffet. The second part of my program is called the Wisdom Buffet. We live in a, a city that has two over 200 nations. In fact, I did a recipe today in my, my Twitter. I said, how to make the new mind. First, stir together 200 wisdom nations, then add some excitement, a dash of fun, and serve gently to others. We have the wisdom of the world living right here. Why should one person's wisdom be the only wisdom. My job mm -hmm. is to harvest, mm -hmm. to awaken, to collect, and to empower and say, we need what you have. Mm -hmm. You came from a situation in Vietnam or Singapore or Australia. We need your wisdoms. And mm -hmm. so I'm the wisdom harvester of the hundreds of nations that lived here in Toronto to use what they know to deal with what we have. Okay, so applying your wisdom and keeping in mind that 
you know, Toronto is a large demographic of different uh, age groups. How can you um, harness what you have uh, um, developed in your lifetime through your skills to, and, and give me a scenario to apply to perhaps dealing with something like the garbage situation or the... Um, I love that, that or, or Or um, even, you know, what's going on with the, the transit, the commission. You know, um, somebody somewhere must have figured out how to do something. That's yeah. That's so the I, 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 want, so I wanted to hear your take to on invite, it. My job is to invite the young people to translate to their seniors, to their elders, so that we can get their stories. So I wish to, mm, I guess, collect the wisdom stories of the people who came here. Everybody who came here from another place has got an amazing story to tell how they escaped from Russia, China, Africa and made their way to Toronto. Mm -hmm. That courage, that wisdom needs to be acknowledged, respected and called forward. Who knows what out there to deal with a thing like the garbage strike? What I know is I'm a member of six unions. Six unions. Okay. And when we have issues with unions in this town, I can look the unions in the eye and say to them, we're better than this. Are you proud of that headline? Mm -hmm. Toronto stinks. Mm -hmm. The unions have abrogated their, mor their moral responsibility. We used to be a moral force. Now we just want bigger hats with which we can collect a couple more bucks. It's demeaning and the unions have a much bigger role to play and I intend to challenge and stimulate my brothers and sisters in the unions to do better than that. This is the 21st century, for goodness sakes. We have the same relationship as we did in the 19th century. You got the money, I want it. You want me to work hard, I want to work less. Mm -hmm. This is the extent of the thinking? No, 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 we're better than that. You know, Howard, I saw a headline, I don't know if it was today or yesterday, in the Toronto Sun, uh, big picture of Rob Ford out there and uh, you know, cut, uh, and who who is I guess surprising at least somebody at the Toronto Sun uh, with his uh, uh, slash poll with his polls exactly yeah. that you know there's a, a penny pinching pit bull I think they call them, um, and I think uh, one of the things that makes this city work better than most cities maybe all cities in North America. Really, this city really works. We're it's a great brink. city. We are on the cusp of some greatness here. Absolutely. Unless we step backwards. Yeah, and, and you know, but you start to cut those things back, like close the parks, close the pools, cut back on the schools. Like what kind of city are we creating? And, it, and, and I just don't get it. Like why were we able to afford it yesterday, but we can't afford it tomorrow? And well, the guys good. like like the guys like Rob Ford, those guys are that are all about fiscal responsibility. They're going to say, "Well, we've got to you know we've got to manage the budget," and in a way they have a point because the city does have to deal under those realities. But you know how would you deal with that situation? Well, I'm going to go through the platform. We've been to two, right? Okay. The, uh, the breath of fresh air, which drives the ecological or the green platform. The wisdom buffet, which is the harvesting of the intelligence and the wisdoms of the world. The next is the city that shares. There's only four parts, right? I'm on to the third now. The city that shares. And what is it that we can share? The first thing, that if I'm elected mayor, my first act, my very first act, will be to demand a recount, because that's a hard job. I don't think I really want to do that, be the mayor. <laughs> if I have to, I'll share it. I want to share the mayorship because one person cannot be the manager, the facilitator, the budgeter, the, and the philosopher. That's what I bring to this process is philosophy, humor, and a belief in the genius of the people of Toronto. So the third platform is the city that shares. We need, we need to share. We need. To, I, I, I'm going to issue shares. I didn't bring them. And I'm by going the way, to issue shares in Toronto. We need to be. You well, how are you going to choose who you're going to share with, though? That you have to be very careful about. Everybody in Toronto is my family. Everybody, mm -hmm. whether they're my enemies or the opponents or friends, they're all family. Some mm -hmm. of my family are nuts. Some of them are dangerous, but they're still family. Mm -hmm. How People. many? How many? Sorry, I just want to make sure we get to the whole platform. Yeah. How, how many? Do we have to get to? There's only four. There's, There's only four. Oh, okay. Now, almost three. Okay, right? great. The that fourth one is the most important one. Mm -hmm. It's called the new mind. The old mind 
the new mind. The old mind is significant because it brought us from cave to condo. Did a pretty good job, but it's I left know, behind a trail cave. that the old mind cannot fix. Einstein said that the problems that the old brain created are not the problems that are going to be solved by that brain. Mm -hmm. We need a new way of thinking, a new way of being, a new way of seeing, a new way of contemplating things around us. So I bring to the table the principle of new-mindedness. So when we ask a question like, are we going to raise taxes or are we going to slash services? That's the extent of thinking that the old mind has. We can only do this or slash that. And that's the extent of the imagination of the old mind. Kill or be killed. Can you imagine those are the only two choices? But